And now, in cooperation with police and federal law enforcement departments throughout the United States, Waterman's Pens and Waterman's Inc. present Gangbusters. Out of the foxholes of Europe, from the steaming jungle swamps of the Pacific, our men are now coming home to a new America. A wave of crime has followed every war, and we must not allow lawbreakers to tear down here at home the very ideals that our men have fought to preserve. Tonight, Gangbusters presents the authentic inside facts concerning a killer who felt he was even too tough for the army. And so Louis J. Valentine, who has just resigned as commissioner of the largest police department in the world, takes over to interview by proxy Chief A.S. Harper, chief of police of Amarillo, Texas. Commissioner Valentine. Chief Harper, I believe that one of the surest ways to combat crime is to expose it. Now we would like to have you rip this case wide open tonight. Well, Commissioner Valentine... I'd like to start back in October 1942 at 10.30 in the evening. A small-time gangster, Doc Rickett, was sitting with his girlfriend in a fashionable Cincinnati nightclub. You're a snappy-looking number tonight, Cora. You like this dress, huh? Yeah, it fits you like a glove. You're the... Hey, what are you staring at? Huh? What are you staring at? The big red-headed man over there. Any objections? Plenty. You're my girlfriend. <laughs> the redhead doesn't think so. He's smiling. Why, right, that's... Hey. Don't pay any attention to him, Cora. Why not? That's Red Beaver. Red Beaver? He's dynamite. The FBI and Secret Service have sent out coast-to-coast -coast alarms. Beaver's a deserter from the Army. He's the quickest trigger man I know of. He only pulls the biggest jobs there are. Thanks, Rickett. I thought he was interesting. Now I'm sure. Now you've done it. He's coming over. You cross him and you get a bullet through your head. And you thought you were a big shot. I bet there are a million girls who wish they were in my place right now. He's sharp. Hello, pretty legs. How about a little dance? Lay off, Beaver. She's my girl. So you know who I am, I reckon? Sure, I, I spotted your red hair. I'm no Sunday school teacher myself. I blow around. How'd you know my name? Well, when I spotted good looking here, I asked a few questions about who she was with. What's your tag, sugar? Cora. Cora Weston. Mm hmm. You've got what it takes, Cora. Move over, I'll sit down. I told you, Beaver. Cora is my girl. Sure, sure, I had you. You know, Rickett, I think I could use you. Maybe put you up in a big dough. Yeah? Yeah, I could use a smart guy right now in my business. What kind of business, Beaver? <laughs> the entertainment business. Yeah? Sure, I like to entertain. Let's see, we'll uh, start with a little Halloween party. A Halloween party? Where? In the Avondale branch of the Second National Bank. Oh, I get it. Uh-huh. <laughs> Halloween. You know, sweep the bank clean with the witch's broom. Suppose you take a walk for a couple of minutes, Rickard. I... I want a little board of directors meeting here with Cora. Well, I... Scram. Okay. Okay, I'll, uh, I'll get a drink at the bar, and then I'll be back. Smooth, honey. You're plenty smooth. You're kind of sugar-coated yourself, Beaver. <laughs> Believe in holidays, Cora? Well, I guess so. Why? Today's Columbus Day. Remember, Columbus discovered America and moved in. So? So I'm taking a tip from him. I just discovered you, so I'm going to do like him. Move in. Ah, 
say it bad, Cora. Sit in your apartment. You plan to me. Want me to fix your cocktail, Beaver? <laughs> After two weeks, you have to ask me. I'll answer. Oh, no, I'll do the answer. Hello? Oh, uh, is that you, Beaver? Sure, it's me. Well, uh, I haven't got anything to do. Uh, suppose I drop up, huh? No. Cora's my girlfriend now, Richard. Oh, uh, get your surprise package? Yeah, yeah. But a clown suit and a cowboy suit. What's the gag? Tomorrow's Halloween. You dress up fancy on Halloween, don't you? You ought to wear the clown suit, see? <laughs> Good gag, huh? Oh. Besides, the clientele at the bank will have a tough time describing a clown and a cowboy. I get it. Wait with me a while, Rickett, and you'll learn things. Attention, all police. Avondale branch of the Second National Bank just robbed at $7,000 by two men in Halloween costumes. One dressed as a cowboy, one as a clown. Approach with caution. These men are heavily armed. That's all. Well, Agent Hurley, we put that warning on every teletype through the state. We at the FBI appreciate your cooperation, Captain Morse. The bandit's stunt of dressing in Halloween costumes was a touch of genius. Nobody can seem to identify them. But I've always noticed that when a man gets money easily, he spends it easily. So, as just one possible trap, I sent out an alert to nightclubs, bars, racetracks, and pool rooms to watch for men who seem to be spending money too freely. Good. Perfect. I never guess they're spending a little too much money is what we're waiting for. Like this nightclub, Cora? We've sure been covering them all, haven't we, Red? <laughs> That's me, Cora. Everything in a big way. Yeah, but Red, you've been cracking so many bangs. Every day, headlines in the papers. <laughs> Rick is so scared, he doesn't even dare leave our hideout. He's pretty jealous, you know, Red. You taking me away from him. You leave Ricka to me. Baby, I've got the biggest job yet lined up. A hundred thousand. Yeah? When? Christmas. At Christmas time, everybody gets presents. I figure maybe the uh, Charleston Trust will want to give us a present. Why do you always pick a holiday, Red? Holidays are made for guys like me. On holidays, the suckers stuff up with turkey and guzzle booze, right? They get slow and careless. Gee, I never thought of that. Booze makes them slip up. They let themselves. Uh, uh, waiter. Yes, sir. Waiter, bring another bottle of that champagne over here. Huh? Coming up, sir. You're spending your money awful fast tonight, Red. That's the way I make it, isn't it? Banks have lots of money, you know. Yeah, but you've been drinking a lot. You said tonight... When a man was drinking, he wasn't himself. That's for other guys, not me. You couldn't tell by the way I talk I've had a drink. Here you are, sir. A faulty champagne. You know, someday I'm going to take a bath in that stuff. <laughs> I wouldn't do that, sir. The bubbles are tickle. <laughs> Quick on the trigger, ain't he? Pour it. Certainly, sir. Anything else, sir? No. Here. Buy yourself a house for Christmas. Here, take it. Thank you, sir. Yes. Uh, thank you, sir. Thank you. You blown your top, Beaver. Giving that guy a century for a tip? Shut up and drink your champagne. Dames will crab all the time get on my nerves. You couldn't just slip the weight of the hundred. Oh, no, not you. You had to make a production of it. I said shut up. First thing you know, you... Don't you button that loose slip of yours or I'll slap you again. Now you've done it, you fool. That army sergeant saw you slap me. Oh, yeah? I eat army sergeants on toast. Oh, he's going to use that for an excuse to come over and meet you, huh? Going to chisel in like I did to get you away from Rickett. <laughs> What's the matter? Something wrong? What's it to you? Can I do anything for you, miss? No. No. Everything's all right. Hey. What was you figuring on doing, Chum, if it hadn't been all right? Ah, take it easy, buddy. You've been celebrating a little too much. I suppose because you're in the army, you figure maybe I'm easy pickings, huh? Now, look, I don't want any trouble as long as the young lady says she's all right. 
Okay, I'm leaving. Oh, so you were going to pull us Prince Charming stuff, huh? Put that gun away, this time, Sergeant. You ran into a tough customer. Oh, if you're so tough, why don't you join the Army? We need some good fighters. Oh, the Army, huh? I don't see you being so brave. And besides, I don't like the looks of an Army uniform. Red. Red. Follow me. We've got to get out of here. As long as I say so, Rickard. Stop playing that piano, Cora. Sit down, Beaver. You're driving us nuts with that walk. Shut up. If it wasn't for your nagging, this wouldn't have happened. Can you beat that? Red gets a snoop full, blows his top, shoots an army sergeant, then tries to pin the rap on me. You hadn't ought to be so quick with that rod, Beaver. You gonna start telling me how to operate? Oh, no. It ain't Killing that. comes pretty easy to me, Rickard. I'd remember that if I were you. The same goes for you, Cora. And what's that? It ain't a woodpecker. See what it is, Cora. Open up in there. Cops. Stall them. Give us a chance to get out the back window onto the fire escape. If it's the cops, I'll blast them from there. Open up or we'll break in the door. Take your time, boys. Take your time. Okay. What you selling? I'm Captain Morse of the Cincinnati Detectives. Mr. Hurley's a federal agent. So what? We're looking for a man who was seen coming into this building. Why pick on me? Every man who comes in this building don't come up here, unfortunately. Cut the comedy. We know he's here. Step aside. Hold it, copper. I'm old-fashioned. I don't let strange men into my apartment unless they've got search warrants. Really? Yeah. And that goes double for coppers. Well, by an odd coincidence, I happen to have a search warrant. Right here. Well, if you must come in... What was that? Come on. Come back from that fire escape into the room again. With your arms up. We guessed if we came in the door, you gentlemen might go out the window, so I had a few of my men out there. Smart guy, huh? I know one of them, Captain Morse, Rickett. Rickett's an old-time gangster. The redhead's a new one. I'm just an innocent bystander. The redhead is the one who shot the army sergeant. You got nothing on me, Copper. No? We had all of the nightclubs tipped off to report men who were spending money too freely. The waiter who waited on your table called us up. We examined the hundred-dollar bill you gave him as a tip. I want to see my lawyer. I don't blame you, Red. Suppose we go down to headquarters for a talk. And, uh, if I say no? Well, if you should say no, I'll tell you. You'd come along a good deal like this. Let go of me, Copper. Let go. Come on. Let go of me, will you? So Red Beaver started moving fast, Chief, Ho- Chief Hopper. Yes, Commissioner. Red Beaver didn't know what had struck him till he was safe behind bars. But the crime history of Red Beaver had not yet reached its peak. Tonight marks the first broadcast in this L.E. Waterman Company presentation of Gangbusters. And we're proud to have been able to select as chief investigator and commentator for these programs a man who has been a police officer for almost half a century and who last midnight resigned after 11 years as police commissioner of the New York City Police Department. Louis J. Valentine, as head of the largest police force in the world, has made contacts with and influenced police procedure on a nationwide scale. Federal, state, and local police departments throughout the country know and respect Commissioner Valentine as being in the forefront of our constant war against crime. Gangbusters and the L.E. Waterman Company are proud that Commissioner Louis J. Valentine will act as chief investigator on these factual cases. Well, Commissioner Valentine, how does it feel to be facing a microphone? Frankly, Mr. Gardner, it's harder to face than a gangster with a gun. But the L.E. Waterman Company has provided me with an opportunity to do something I've wanted to do for a long time. To me, gangbusters, which names names and states facts, is the ideal way to prove the folly of crime to those who might otherwise be led astray. And it's going to be my purpose to see that every program is pointed to bring about a better, safer, 
Happy America for all. Thank you, Commissioner. And now, in recognition of your never-ending fight against crime, the L.E. Waterman Company makes the year's first network presentation of its Waterman's Deluxe Pen and Pencil gift set to you, Commissioner. Thank you, Mr. Gardner. It certainly is beautiful. But I already have a Waterman set, one that was presented to me when I became a captain of police in this department 19 years ago. And I'd rather miss one of Mrs. Valentine's home meals than lose that set. Well, Commissioner, I don't blame you. But we do want you to have this newest model Waterman. Thanks, Mr. Gardner. I accept it gratefully. And I'll use them both. And now, Commissioner Valentine, back to the case of Red Beaver. Chief Hopper, Red Beaver was in the Cincinnati prison. Yes, Commissioner Valentine. And it was 16 minutes before 9 on the evening of February 12th. Red Beaver lay sprawled in his bunk, watching water pouring from his wash basin to the cell floor. Finally, he walked over to the bars separating him from Doc Ricketts' cell. Hi, Ricketts. Where's all the water coming from, Beaver? <laughs> I told you we'd break out of this joint. But if it's all the same to you, I'd rather walk out than swim out. Know what day today is, Ricketts? Sure. February 12th. So what? February 12th. Lincoln's birthday. What do you want we should do? Eat birthday cake? Yeah. You never heard what Lincoln did? He got himself shot. Is that what you're aiming for us to get? Yeah, but before he did, he uh, freed the slaves. So? Today's Lincoln's birthday, so we'll do like him. We'll uh, free the slaves. Us included. Just like that, huh? How? Plug up your base and let the water run on the floor. Why? Yours is running plenty. You're going to start raising fish in there? Do like I say. Okay, okay. Good. Now we'll wait a minute and we call it God. Then what? We yell for a dry cell. While we're switching, we hit him over the head and make a break. How's the water coming? You could launch a ship in here now. Okay. Ran the cup. God! God! Help! Help! Hey, We're being flooded! Get us out of Beaver, I'm cracking. Don't worry. We'll be all right here in Kansas City. But the whole country's looking for us. <laughs> I always do things in a big way, Rickett. But I tell you, Kansas City's safe. I got it all figured out. Roadblock up ahead. Where are those rotten coppers? The coppers all over the place. I'll run over them. I'll kill them. Hold on. you, Helen? Sure. Yeah. Wait a minute. Let me sit down, huh? You tired? Oh, I'm just not used to this Texas weather yet. Mm -hmm. How do you like it here in Amarillo? 
Well, that depends upon how well you like me, baby. <laughs> but I haven't seen you very often. I'll see you tonight. All right. Sure, we'll go to a club. At... Wait a minute. What's the matter? Hold it. Can you beat that? Huh? <laughs> What's the matter? <laughs> Two women out in the street. They bump cars. <laughs> Are they mad? Uh-oh. But the little one's shoving a big one around. No, no, the big one, she won't take it. Wow. <laughs> what happened? The little one gives the big one a slap. Uh-oh, the cop's seen him. Hey, this is a grand sand seat. <laughs> hey, they're looking up here at the window. They can see me laughing at them. <laughs> they're as good as a radio fight announcer. Uh, the cop's walking across the sidewalk toward my window here. Hey, this is a laugh. Why? If you only knew, sister. Hey, mister, you saw these two women bump cars, didn't you? Sure, I seen them, officer. I was looking right out the window here. Well, which one was at fault? Ah, uh, no, you don't. You don't get me between two dames, especially those dames. If one of them was cute, it might be different. Hello? Hello? Uh, wait a minute, baby. I'm talking to the cop here. Well, I guess I have to take him up to the station house. Will you uh, come up with me and tell what you saw? No, wait a minute. I'm not going... Uh, okay. <laughs> okay, sure, I'll go with you. I'd be much obliged if you would. Sure, sure, I will. Uh, hello, Sugar. I'll call you back later. All right, Edward. I gotta go see justice done. Well, copper, lead the way. I'll put on my hat and be right with you. Now, this is the gentleman I was telling you about, Captain Kirkman. He was sitting in the window and saw the two women bump fenders. Oh, I appreciate your coming up to the station, huh? That's all right. Uh, what's your name? Jack Edwards. Oh, I'm Captain Kirkman, and this is Captain King. I'm glad to meet you. Oh, uh, sit down, Mr. Uh, Edwards. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Ah, you've got a pretty good police station here at Amarillo, haven't you? Oh, it serves its purpose. You a stranger in Amarillo? I've been here a couple of months. Uh, you want me to tell you about those two women bumping cars, huh? <laughs> <laughs> yes, but you don't happen to know a man by the name of Red Beaver, do you? <laughs> uh, who? Red Beaver. He's an escaped convict and a killer. No, I never heard of him. What do you ask me? I was just wondering, Red, that's all. You call me Red? My name ain't Red. It's Jack. Jack Edwards. Oh, I see. Here. There's a wanted circular for Red Beaver for desertion from the Army and killing an Army sergeant. No, I don't know what you're talking Detectives about. Detectives standing back to you all have their guns out, Red. No, no I, I didn't kill nobody. It wasn't me. I, I didn't kill him. I... Uh, what a sucker I am. Yes, you are. All police officers have been on the lookout for you. I think I'm ending up here. For them two dames to bump their cars, I could bump them off. Didn't figure it might be a little plan to get you up here without any shooting. And I thought I was smart. Me, me, Red Beaver, being took in by this one-horse joint. I didn't kill that guy, though. We'll leave that to the United States Army, Beaver. They're asking for you. No, 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 no look, I, I, I'll do anything. I'll tell you anything you want to know, but don't let the Army get a hold of me. Don't, 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 don't let the Army get a hold of me, please. Oh. Harry Red Beaver, as convicted by a court-martial at Fort Sill, you will, on this morning of September 26, 1944, be hanged by the neck until dead. Harry Beaver, have you anything to say? No. No, I guess I ain't got nothing. May God rest your soul. And Commissioner Valentine, at 6.37 a.m., 20 minutes later, Harry Red Beaver was dead, executed by the United States Army. Chief Hopper... This has been a terrific case tonight, one I doubt that we will ever forget. I wish that every person in this country might have heard it. Yes, Commissioner Valentine, to Red Beaver, the men in the uniform of their country were suckers. He knew better. He knew how to get easy money. But it didn't turn out that way, and it never does. And now, before we present our urgent last-minute bulletins on persons wanted by the authorities at this very moment, the case of Red Beaver is over, but the case of the missing words remains a mystery to millions of Americans. Their only clue is the peculiar behavior of a fountain pen, 
A pen that sometimes writes on and on without ever seeming to run dry. And then again, it seems out of ink almost before it starts. The reason is that in the first instance, the pen was filled with Waterman's wonderful blue-black ink and thus gave thousands of extra words. The second time, however, a different ink had been used and fewer words resulted. This tremendous difference, ladies and gentlemen, is because Waterman's blue-black is all ink, true ink. No solvents, no added chemicals, no dilution. That's why, by actual test, Waterman's blue-black ink gives you up to 6,500 more words per filling. Think of it. Up to 6,500 more words per filling than other inks tested. Now you can cut those messy pen-filling chores perhaps in half. Now you can write steadily for hour after hour after hour without pausing to refill your pen. And all you have to do is to make every filling a waterman's filling. Yes, you can solve your own case of the missing words forever with Waterman's blue-black ink. And remember, Waterman's ink is also available in seven other pleasing and distinctive colors. All come in the convenient tip-fill bottle. Each, only ten cents. Now, gangbusters, nationwide clues. Chief R.F. Worstner, Dayton, Ohio Police Department, announces a reward of $8,500 is being offered for return of two-and-a-half-year-old baby Ronald Thompson and conviction of his kidnapper. Here is description given gangbusters by Dayton police of alleged kidnapper. Woman known as Mary Wilkie, 40 to 45 years old, 5 feet 6 inches, about 150 pounds, Ruddy complexion, reddish brown hair, believed hennet, brushed back and up, speaks with slight accent, possibly southern or eastern, pleasing personality, renew vigilance for this woman, reward now offered by Dayton, Ohio Police, $8,500. From Denver, Colorado Police, urgent bulletin concerning suspect wanted for questioning in connection with murder of J.A. Richardson, that city. Suspect described as follows. Andrew Cypress, alias Jack Wood, alias William Hammond, 36, 5 feet 6 inches, about 150 pounds, dark hair, brown eyes, when last seen, according to police, wore a khaki shirt or jacket with blood stain on right shoulder and sleeve, where he supposedly was shot in struggle with victim... Suspect believed to have left scene of crime in company of woman in green Pontiac sedan bearing Los Angeles license ending in numerals 8-0. Watch for Andrew Cyphus. Wanted for questioning. Murder. Denver Police Department. If you have any information concerning these clues, notify your local police, the Federal Bureau of Investigation, or gangbusters at once. Now, here is Commissioner Valentine. Next week, gangbusters will present the case of the red evening dress. It's about a girl and her love for a killer. Remember, next week, same time, same station, one of the most unusual cases gangbusters has ever presented. In the meantime, when you are buying a fountain pen or when you're buying ink, just look for the name Waterman. Gangbusters Factual Case Histories is a Phillips H. Lord production. This is ABC, the American Broadcasting Company.